well, today, White Pill Wednesday, the second White Pill Wednesday, the first of many, hopefully, I thought I'd talk a, talk a bit about um, uh, uh, space telescopes and black holes and uh, the very recent things that have, have gone down in that sphere. Uh, because last week, people seemed to, a fair amount of the comments, people seemed to like the sort of science and technology aspect. Um, so I thought I could carry that on. I'm, I'm, I can't really promise that White Pill Wednesday will be that every single time. Uh, but still. Um, okay, so in the last few days or last week or so, um, we, we've had uh, some new images released by, uh, well, th th there's various telescopes. There's actually quite a lot of space telescopes. <laughs> People will probably be aware of Hubble. Uh, but there, there's there's uh, a dozen more. There's like 17, for example, were involved just in this one uh, piece of research, one paper uh, that I'm going to talk about here. So there are actually quite a lot of different space telescopes up there. Um, and we've been able to make some great images. John, I don't know if you get up the very first picture. Um, so... I'm interested in, I've got a fair few YouTube channels that are science -y based ones, astronomy-based ones that I, I like, because my thing, my wheelhouse is history. Uh, but as an amateur, I'm very, very interested in science stuff. In one of the comments from last week, someone mentioned Anton Petrov. I don't know if you know that channel, but when I saw that comment, I was happy because I follow him very closely um, and he's good on that. But there, there's lots of channels. Event Horizon is one with John Michael Godier. If people are into this stuff, they probably know this stuff. Isaac Arthur, 60 Symbols, Dr. Becky. Anyway, in the last week or so, there's been uh, there's been quite a lot of talk about... Um, well, we've been able, one of the biggest black holes in our, <laughs> in our region of space is called... Uh, M87, well that's the name of the galaxy, the entire galaxy, it's one of the most, it is the biggest, most massive galaxy anywhere near us, M87. And at the centre of that is a supermassive black hole. And people might remember that it was about two years ago now, it was in 2019 we first got the, the first image of that. Um, and uh, but it wasn't in, as you can imagine, it's not in sort of fantastic quality because it's so far away. It's 50 million light years away. Um, however, so what, so what is this we're looking at? Here? Oh, sorry. So this image is our Milky Way. That's obviously okay. from Earth. <laughs> and that sort of stretch of stars, you can see a, a sort of a pathway of stars there. Um, ain't, lots of, lots of, of ain't, spirals. Sorry? That's one of the spirals, right? Well, we're, we're on the outer edge of one of the spirals okay. and we're looking sort of into the middle you're looking back in towards the middle of the Milky Way there. Um, and ancient people thought of it as a type of um, a pathway to the gods or a pathway to the heavens. Um, in Chinese and Japanese cultures, they thought of it as things like a, a silver river. Or um, in, in ancient Indian cultures, I've heard uh, the, the Ganges of the sky and things like this. So lots and lots of cultures and civilizations um, saw that because that's actually quite difficult to see you need very very clear skies uh, to see that with the naked eye and um, you need you know sort of no light pollution at all i've i've i don't think i've ever seen that with my own eye, anything approaching that with my own eyes i don't know if you have but anyway that is the milky way our galaxy and um but anyway, you were saying about black holes sorry yeah and it wasn't that long ago when we didn't even know for sure whether whether, whether there was a black hole at the center of every single galaxy or not we weren't 100% sure. They, they thought, I'm talking like 10, 15 years ago, they suspected there were. And anyway, now we think there is almost certainly a black hole um, at the centre of every galaxy. Our one, they call it Sagittarius A, Sagittarius A star, they call it, and which is a, a black hole at the centre of our galaxy. However, because, we're so, because the Earth and our sun is sort of in the same plane as the majority of the, all the stars, in our solar system, it's actually very, very, very difficult to see the black hole at the centre of the Milky Way. Very difficult because there's just so much stuff in between. So it's easier to image black holes in other galaxies, even if they're <laughs> millions of light years away. So there was a, uh, a th th there's a, one project or a team. Um, th well. First of all, I should probably explain, there's all different types of light or on, the, on the, uh, the electromagnetic spectrum, of which visible light is only one small tiny bit. Uh, people probably know that, you know, at, at one end, the more energetic end, you've got sort of gamma rays, 
coming back, you've got sort of X-rays, the ultraviolet, and then our visible range of light, and then there's infrared, microwaves, radar, and radio at the end. So anyway, you can look into space on, uh, with all those different types of light. So radio telescopes are a thing. You might remember the Arecibo uh, telescope. It's in, it features in Goldeneye. The movie Goldeneye, have you seen that? I haven't seen it. Oh, it's quite old. I suppose it is from the 90s now. Um, Just a giant, giant telescope. Anyway, radio telescopes uh, are a thing. Um, And uh, perhaps, uh, do you want to put up the first clip we've got? Um, So here's just, uh, we're sort of zooming in on our Milky Way galaxy here. Uh, I should uh, narrate it if people can't see what's going on. Um, And we are able to get what I think is pretty fantastic detail. Um, but it's it's very, very difficult. This is mainly optical. This is actually, you know, visible light. Uh, but when we get closer and closer, they have to change to different forms of light. So anyway, when we end up right at the very centre, um, you'll be able to see, or not see, as the case may be, a point around which the closest stars, the most central stars in our galaxy are rotating or revolving around. And I mentioned it's a point that you, you can't see. There's nothing particularly to see. Um, I think actually on this image there is a, a, some sort of flashing. But anyway, let's have a quick look at this. So you can see that things are orbiting around some sort of point there. And that will be, that is the centre of our galaxy. Um, as I say, Sagittarius A, which is... Um, a black hole which is about 4.3 million solar masses, <laughs> um, which as black holes go is is a, a massive one, but not sort of the, the biggest out there. So that's um, that's confirmed now. It is actually a black hole in the centre of... Yeah, yeah, Sagittarius A. Yeah, that's right. And it's relatively dormant. Um, some black holes sort of uh, uh, are, are feasting on matter around them and they'll have an accretion disk of matter and they'll be shooting out giant jets of, do you, of do you have any particles. Idea? Sorry, Sorry did, uh, how long did that take, that, that clip there, when you saw it zooming around? Like, do you know if that was... Oh, yeah, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, uh, it's a very good question. I'm not sure exactly. Um, but I believe the stars moving closest to it are moving insanely fast, yeah. like, a, you know, a decent chunk of the speed of light, um, which is <laughs> incredible, really. Um so even though we can't really see the black hole at the centre of our galaxy very well, we have been able, if there are other galaxies that are angled such a way that we can sort of see straight down into it, or more or less, then we're likely to be able to get a better view. Um, and one of these is the galaxy M87. Now, they've been able to see, or been able to measure in various ways, <laughs> that it's something in the region of 6.5 billion solar masses. I mean, it's mind-blowing. I know a lot of figures and a lot of numbers about space are mind-blowing. It's very difficult to really get a grasp on what that really is, what that means. Um, And I'm not denying that. It is difficult. I can't really properly picture it. But the black hole, the event horizon of it, they think is just way bigger than our entire solar system even. Um, And you can have all sorts of black holes. You can have very small black holes, they think now, primordial black holes, uh, that maybe that you can have a black hole that's like the size of a baseball or something, that that's possible. We're not sure. But anyway, there's a certain breed of black hole that's a supermassive, and the one at the heart of M87 is just that. Um, And they've been able to... They've been able to picture it quite well. Uh, Do you want to keep up picture three? So th- this is it, and this is this is from um, this is an, an X-ray image. As I say before, there's all different types of light, uh, one of which is or types of uh, radiation on the electromagnetic spectrum, and this is X-rays. So we're looking at X-rays here. It's from uh, the uh, space telescope Ch- Chandra, um, and right at the middle there, that is M87, right in the middle, um, and there's some as you can see, there's something sort of shooting out of it, isn't there? There's some sort of jet there shooting out of it um so is that is that hawking's radiation named after no 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 Uh, i believe hawking radiation is something where the odd particle here or there can sort of spontaneously exist outside of the event horizon that's something else that jet (laughs) is where the accretion disk uh uh, so the matter that goes around the black hole they think now that black holes have apart from anything else, uh, an insanely powerful magnetic field. That's what destroys and rips up everything around it. Um, 
and and we don't fully understand why but b because of that magnetic field it ends up at, at the poles of the black hole shooting out giant jets there would be another jet coming the other way we just don't see it very well because of the angle that we look at because that jet is not f firing straight towards earth in any way but it's sort the angle of it is sort of towards us um so we'd be looking down or looking up at whichever way you, you want to picture it in your mind at this galaxy so that jet is in fact a 5,000 light year long jet of particles shooting straight out of one of the poles of the supermassive black hole at the center of m87 that's what we're looking at there um and and the, the particles the, the matter that's being shot out there is they say something like 99 percent the speed of light uh, so the forces involved the power involved is comical yeah i mean it's just you can't picture it you know if you want to accelerate actual matter not just photons but matter to 99 percent the speed of light the power the forces involved to do that uh, yeah well, it's, almost said only, astronomical you but you can that's only find cliche, it in nature it? it's not something humans could probably oh. ever do no okay. no 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 i mean well in particle accelerators they accelerate it's like, like it's like it's one yeah it's like one atom or something yeah. um <laughs> um so, uh, John, can we look at image five, actually? Can we just jump to image five there? So that is the image that came out in about 2019, and it set the scientific world off, because that is an image of the black hole. It's X-ray. We're still looking at it here in X-ray. This is an optical light. Um, but that's really quite an amazing thing. We never, had, we've nev we never had any image of a black hole at all until 2019. And... And there it is. And it looks like the, uh, well, the, 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 the circle around the donut of orange <laughs> around that is, they think, the, well, it's the accretion disk of matter that orbits around the black hole. Um, but very recently, if John if we can go to the next one, number six, there you go. That, we've got it in better detail now. I mean, look, that's way better detail, isn't it? And you can see that, um, that, uh, that what's going on there is probably, again, to do with the magnetic field, crazily strong man magnetic field that's doing that. But you can see how we're moving on, how we're getting better and better and better at these things. And, um, well, if, it, uh, if could we look at number seven? Okay, so... Well, number seven, that's, I believe that's in the in the radio there, but... Um, well, could you, could you go back one? It was to that picture of the, that one, yeah. Okay, so in order to see deeper and deeper into space, kind of obviously, you need more and more powerful telescopes or, or space telescopes. This actually isn't one of the space telescopes. Uh, so what this is, is an array of all different types of Earth-based telescopes working together uh, to make, effectively make a lens that's almost the size of the Earth. <laughs> I mean, how incredible is that? And they only, they only realised that that would even be possible in about 2006. And now they've done it. They're doing it. You can even see there's one down on the, on the Antarctic there, which is <laughs> quite incredible. Um, uh, yeah, so that's the Event Horizon... Uh, is that what they call it? The Event Horizon Telescope? Um, <laughs> so, so, yeah, that is what we were able to get, those incredible images of that. Of that, um, that of that black hole there, um, but there's also you can also see it in other types of of light. Like we can you can actually turn Hubble. People know about the Hubble Space Telescope, which is works in the in, in optical light, and its mirror is I think about three meters, which is kind of incredible incredible to get a space telescope up that's that big. The James Webb will be coming soon. I'll talk about that one day, hopefully. <laughs> big fan of the James Webb telescope, which isn't optical, but anyway. Um, so I think that's incredible. I think that speaks of um, a type of cooperation between uh, humans, which is, uh, well, r remarkable. It should be something of a white pill. Um, I said in the other one, the other Wednesday, didn't I, that humans sort of do anything and everything all at once. We do the crazy, insane, backward stuff, and we do the, the noble, amazing you know, mind-blowingly good things that we do all at once. And I think maybe we take people on a bit of an emotional roller coaster today where we're right at the very depths of the darkest things humans do um, to the tippity top of the mountain where we do the most incredible things. I mean, making effectively making a type of device to peer into space that's the size of the Earth. 
wow. Right? I mean, uh, th 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 we thought that that could be possible and then we just did it. I think, I think, that's, uh, I think that's quite an incredible thing. I mean, uh, like quite often people will see something like that or hear about something like that and, and just be a bit like, oh, well, yeah, cool, I suppose. That's just another thing that, that's in the world now. But I think it's worth, you know, pausing on just just a bit, just just momentarily. <laughs> it's almost got like flashes of a type one civilization, you know? Right. It does feel like progress, don't you think? It does feel like we are going forward. Um, you know, of course, in, in the realms of <laughs> religion and politics, perhaps less so. Yeah. But in the realms of science, I mean, I touched on the point last Wednesday as well, but that... I think if you were to look back, say it's 10,000 years from now, from now and historians were looking back at the 21st century, I hope, I really do hope that a, a lot of our sort of silly leftist wokeness is sort of not really remembered too much. And the main things is that it's the age of the internet or it's the age of space exploration. It's the age of the, uh, it's the age of the James Webb space telescope, that sort of thing. Um, you know, hopefully... Th that will be the case, yeah. and, the, I mean, and the, if they lose, yeah, if if they win, they'll be checking each other's pronouns. <laughs> <in this space. laughs> yeah, perhaps. Um, yes, perhaps. Um, so yeah, I mean, we uh, we we we, we were looking deep into deep into space. Have you got picture eight there, uh, John? If we could go to that. So again, here's another image of M87, um, and you can see the main jet that we've already seen sort of spewing out of the right hand side of it there and there would be a jet the other way which we don't see very well but on this particular image we do see at least uh you know the, the remnants of the more, more, more further away cloud that is created so there would actually be two jets but we only really see one in any detail and they've zoomed in on it a bit there for you um and uh i believe that is in in the radio as well the ra uh, radio um but anyway, if if we could go to number nine, please, John. So that is <laughs> that is from Hubble. So that is visible light. That's the optical spectrum there. That's sort of real, if you know what I mean. That that's real. That's you know not an artist's impression. Um, so <laughs> again, uh, maybe I'm. I hope I'm not. You know, being too over the top here, but I find that incredible. Just really incredible. We're looking at something. Uh, that is mind blowing. That that jet of particles there is moving something like the speed of light, not very close to, obviously not the speed of light, but very close to. It's about five thousand light years long, which actually I think in the scheme of black hole jets isn't that long. They could be millions of light years long, but that one's about five thousand light years. Um, and and the other things they can tell from it are that it's not sort of a perfectly uniform jet of particles there, is it? There's all sorts of different knots within it. In fact, the main one you can see, that's sort of the main sort of white knot that's sort of right in the middle of the screen there, and they call it knot A, um, which probably left the black hole about 2,000 years ago, roughly. So <laughs> in the age of Augustus or something, that's when M87, the supermassive black hole at the heart of M87, that's when it first spat out that, around uh, the age of Christ. Uh, interesting to think. Well, of course, it's about 53, 55 million light years away. So, in fact, it happened about 55 million years ago. But nevertheless, not taking that into account. <laughs> when the light reached us, it was like 2,000 years before. Um, and the, the jet is remarkably straight, isn't it? Um, you would think that maybe it might sort of billow out straight away. But they think, that, I've heard one scientist say, it might have been Dr. Becky even, off of YouTube. Um, I can't remember exactly, but they were saying that the particles, they're moving so fast that they can't interact with each other. The physics won't allow for it. Therefore, they keep in perfectly straight jets. Um, just little things like that I find, I find fascinating. I mean, really fascinating. Uh, almost to the point where if I had my time again, I might go back and try harder at physics. <laughs> I mean, I got my GCSE double science and my GCSE maths just about and, uh, and left it there. I was sort of happy to leave it there. So sort of <laughs> my, my formal skills are sort of a, a competent 16 year old and no more than that. I'm just a fan. You know, I had, we had a couple of comments um, last week where people say, you know, when you're outside your wheelhouse, when you're outside your realm of expertise, you shouldn't really be talking about about it. Um, 
I think that's wrong-headed. Anyone should be able to talk about anything more or less. Because uh, last week, actually a correction from last week, I mentioned that the sort of the, the power unit on the back of Perseverance was a, a nuclear reactor. And um, that's just wrong. That's just wrong. Because you referred to it as the correct thing, didn't you? Um, uh, I think I called it an RTG, but yeah, it's, it's just for right. ease of... Ease of and uh, quite a few people said um, it's not it's not a nuclear reactor. So I'd stand corrected there. Um, um, so again, if I get the odd phrase or word wrong, you know, I, I'm just trying to bring sort of a, a childlike awe to these things rather than claiming to be a true expert. Well, maybe if we just move move on then. It, the, the last uh, image uh, for this, uh, number 10. Oh, so there you can see, there you can see the supermassive black hole at the heart of M87 in three different things. So in X-ray, in radio, and in optical from the Hubble Space Telescope. Um, and this is quite new, you know, um, the team that did this, they did, collected all the research in like 2017, worked on it for years, and it only came out about a week ago. Um, my mind is blown. I hope it, people's out there are too. And, and we've got one last clip, John, if you want to just whack that up. Um, and, well, it sort of speaks for itself, but pe people who perhaps aren't watching it, I can try and describe it a bit. We're just going to zoom in, basically, on this this uh, giant galaxy which is near us. And and you can see in the bottom left all the different types of telescope that are being used to to show you these images. Um, so is this the, the planet-wide telescope you were talking about that's done this? or? Yeah, so that does X-ray. So when it mentions X-ray, um, it, so it, it, it will be that, yeah. yeah. Um, or is it radio? <laughs> there you go. I'm not. I'm no expert. Uh, and one thing I suppose I would say about this galaxy as well is it's so massive is that it controls. It sort of dominates the gravity of not only its it, of, of the galaxy, obviously its own galaxy, but of it, the, of the cluster of galaxies around it. That's how that's how powerful this particular black hole is. Not only that, but even the clusters of galaxies around that galaxy cluster, this dominates, including ours and Andromeda. So in some senses, in some senses, we revolve around this. I think that's, uh, that's incredible. If it was only in the 20s or 30s when Edwin Hubble realised there were entirely other galaxies completely separate to our own, and now we're here. Oh, that's incredible. Look, see that? It shows the size of... It just gives you a comparison of how big that single black hole is. It's bigger than our entire solar system and then some. Um, incredible. If you enjoyed this segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can watch the full broadcast live every weekday at 1pm UK time on lotuseaters.com.